All right, hey, Will Roberts here, and of course, uh, filmfestivallive.com. And that live, by the way, is actually supposed to be live stream, but it works out well because live stream is like the new thing. It's funny because when I started the show 100 years ago, um, I was acting up radio, and then from there it was acting up podcast. And as a radio guy, I was like, I don't want to call my show a podcast. Anyway, then it went to live stream. But now that uh, COVID has happened, uh, it's funny because I used to ask a, a lot of the casting directors. I was talking to David Rappaport, Lana Binker, Grimm, uh, all these different people. I say, hey, I want to do a Skype interview. Now, this is back a little bit. Uh, way before COVID, and I was doing split screen and interviewing, and then I would take and do lower thirds, and I'd edit it, a lot of work. But then COVID happened, and I know all the bad things, but the good things is that people stopped saying to me, oh, you know, I can't really do a video thing. I'm not really going to be ready for that. So now it's funny because uh, everybody's used to doing Zooms in their bathroom. So uh, with that being said, uh, I'm very excited by the fact that uh, acting up, you know, radio is now morphed into a wonderful thing that myself and my partner, who I just recently met, he's awesome. His name is Sal. He's Italian. I don't really say his last name because I don't want to get it wrong. You know what I mean? Anyway, uh, but uh, very excited show today. Very exciting show because we have a guest on and I'm very excited about this because She's the VP, no, that means Vice President of the Long Island Film Festival. Uh, there's an actual title, I'll say it all. But before we start that, um, I hope everything is going well for everybody out there. Lots of stuff happening in the world of our world, which is Hollywood and beyond, and more beyond than Hollywood nowadays, uh, because I was talking to my New York agent, and my Atlanta agent, my Utah agent, and right there, there are three markets that are just uh, blowing up. And a lot of it's because of a lot of reasons, but the big reasons is because of what we're doing here, which is film festivals. Because film festivals are really allowing people, like I've been doing this for 38, 40 years, and in, uh, yeah, I can tell you even 10, 12 years back, I was producing stuff on my phone, but on my three, iPhone three, but people were not feeling comfortable or they didn't have the budget to be able to get a good camera now, i.e. red or even a Canon, you know, a, a, a 7.3, whatever, R, all these things that are all ob obtainable now and people are producing things and they're able to be really, to be quite honest with you, in the running with some of the major studios because the film festivals like the Long Island Film Festival, if you look, and I'm going to, talk about this, but you can go to their website, you'll see it in a second, you'll see that they've got some heavy hitters showing up. So before it used to be, you know, you go on the red carpet if you were a Hollywood person filming stuff with real film and chopping it up, and and you never would think that you could be in this arena. But now uh, we are here, of course, filmfestivallive.com, so that the industry the film and TV industry treat the film festivals not like kids anymore, but adults, because this is the place to be. And if you're creative at all, director, writer, producer, cinematographer, uh, the business, the business, any business in show business, this is a great place for you to be. And there's lots of sites like um, my good friend Richard Botto, who is thir uh, thir uh, Studio 32 or something like that. I can remember. I should remember. I've had him on my show enough times. But these are places that we're all networking doing this. And without further ado, I'm very excited to bring on the show. See how I'm like segueing? I'm trying to get rid of all the garbage stuff that I'm going to talk about and get to the real important things, which is our guest today. Uh, so with that being said, I'm very excited that our guest is going to be coming on. And uh, here is the demo from the Long Island uh, Film Festival Expo in its long name. Uh, and take a look at this and let's come back in just a second. The Long Island International Film Expo is back and in person. Join us August 10th through the 15th at the Belmore Movies and Showplace for our 24th annual festival. Screening 115 films from around the world with 20 world premieres and dozens of US, New York, and Long Island premieres. Life is where filmmakers from all around the globe gather to share their art. 
filmmaking panels, parties, and Q&As with the filmmakers all week long, plus a closing night awards ceremony with Daniel Baldwin, Kim Delaney, and Kristen Thorne. Get tickets and more information at LongIslandFilm.com. I, I love the fact that there's always a Baldwin for an event. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah Markowitz, I'm very excited to have you on the show. Welcome to the show. I love your backdrop. I have to be honest with you. I'm a little jealous. Mine is fake. I watched your husband put yours up, and I think it looks stunning. I love that. Uh, yeah. It's a little sideways, though. I think the camera is sideways, so this is actually sideways. But It gives a good perspective. I clean my office all the time. So I love it. I, if, if I start seeing axes being thrown at it, I'm going to re recommend you duck. But it is quite a beautiful backdrop. Welcome to the show, young lady. How are you today? Thank you. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. I'm great. Thank you. It's uh, nice to kind of get out in the world, even if it's only through a computer screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, that's actually a great first question to ask you. I, I, I don't want to get too deep into uh, all the semantics about the film festival, but are you in person and online? Yes. Yeah, we, we decided we are in person. I think we have like 13 films that are virtual only um, because we didn't have space for them and we wanted to screen them. Uh, but we are also showing probably about 98% of our films also virtually for those people who don't want to travel. So, um, and, and just because, you know, God forbid last minute anything happens, we wanted to make sure we were up and running. Yeah, the other, the other part about that is, is that, and I'm sure you agree, um, is, is that, Doing the virtual stuff has actually kind of been a blessing because, you know, side note, I'm a professional magician, Magic Castle, Magic Circle. And I during the during really heavy COVID, I was actually doing a lot of shows around the world in my studio here. And consequently, what an awesome thing that, you know, 10, 15 years ago, your business was basically you looking out the window and going, here's my people. Now, here we are. And the mm -hmm. uh, Long Island Film Festival Expo can be seen around the world. Yes. That's yeah. cool. I mean, we used to have people travel in a lot, and maybe they will this year. I'm not really expecting it, but could happen. But right. we've had filmmakers from Italy and Spain and Germany and Russia and, and India and everywhere come in. So I, I don't know what this year is going to hold, um, right. but we've always had that very international flavor. Um, we're focusing on not just the local films, but bringing filmmakers together from all over the world. So that's kind of a cool thing. Um, what what possessed you to do this type of um, uh, extensive, a lot of work, um, probably 24 seven until the festival? Is there <laughs> an imbalance of sugar or something else that makes you go, I really wanna do this and work day and night? <laughs> oh man, we started this, this is actually our 24th year. Wow. So, uh, yes, yeah, 24 years ago. So, so basically, my experience is, is 33 years ago, I created the Nassau County Film Commission, which hadn't existed before. And right. um, I ran it through four different administrations before I decided to um, just concentrate on my own filmmaking career, because I'm also a writer, director, I do casting um, and whatnot. And um, we had uh, gotten involved with somebody who said, hey, let's have a film festival. So um, I brought it to the county executive. Um, everybody was on board. Their communications department was on board. And then the person dropped out. So I looked at my partners in crime, who at the time were Ann and Henry Stamfell, who owned the Belmore movies, the Malvern Cinema. Uh, they owned about four other movie theaters at the time. And I said, you know what? I already promised my county executive we were going to have a film festival. So whatever it takes for six weeks, we're going to do a film festival. Yeah. And um, at the time, people weren't just doing posts in their garages. They actually had huge post house, which they still have, but that's yeah. all it was. Yeah. And um, because of my work in the film office, I was able to contact some of the filmmakers and, and say, who are you using and can we get your film? And we called the post house and basically they contacted their filmmakers and threw us a ton of really good films shot, shot on film, you know, 16, sure. 35. And, oh, wow. Yeah, so... And then showing on VHS besides that, because that was the, you know, what the, the low budget independent filmmaker was using. So um, we lost our minds. We did it. And it was actually pretty successful because we were one of the few out there at the time. Now there's like 10,000, you know, in a two mile radius, you get 10,000 film festivals. But really do. Um, at, at that time, I was doing it 24 seven outside of my regular day job. And 
um, since then, um, we've picked up some new members along the way, and uh, we have two, uh, just got to mention, uh, Lindsay and Manny Serrano, who came in with us uh, this past year, have been a tremendous help. Um, Anthony Labriola, who's on our board, runs the Scared Feel Life Film Festival, which is a, a smaller horror festival that's part of life. Um, and uh, this is a big horror community. Uh, so, so what made me decide to do it? Insanity, I'm going to say. Um, but I think it's mostly because over the years, it has been a big help to, to, to filmmakers. We, back in the day, we would have distributors come in and we would have a big closing night and I would make sure to take on most promising filmmakers and sit them with the distributors and deals used to happen like that. Now distributors don't know that necessarily come. They're like, send me a link, you know, if, if anything. So, so that's all changed, but um, really you just know wanting that people yeah so I, I just i'm i'm blown away 25 years um mm -hmm. but that really gives me a plethora of questions i can ask you um mm -hmm. and one of them is because you are a director producer do you edit too and everything i do not edit i don't want to go oh. near editing I, I work with my editor but i, I don't have the patience <laughs> my computer would be out the window <laughs> I, I understand i edit but only out of necessity um mm -hmm. but the but let me ask you um in the 25 years that you've been doing this, you must have seen a lot of different things happen to the industry. I know I have, but I want to ask yeah. you if there's any particular one thing that is your either sticking point to people or is something that you mentioned that you go, I'm so glad that it is now 25 years later and we can do this. Is there anything that is your thing that people would go, oh yeah, you know what, don't bring up that to Debbie. Don't bring it up to her because she's really passionate about this. Or I'm just wondering if there's anything you can point out that's happened in 25 years that now is either good or bad of the industry. Um, hmm, of the industry in general or film festivals? You're talking about the industry? Well, it, yeah, either film and TV or, um, you know, like I say to some people, how has actors' discipline changed? And they go, a lot. Like, there's not a lot of it sometimes, and they're all on TikTok. So is there something either positive or negative that you think has happened in the 25 years that you've done this um, film festival, I guess? Um, I think that... What do we see? I mean, we've always seen a, a, a different um, kind of film uh, films come in. What I can say is because it is so relatively inexpensive to make a movie these days that anybody can make a movie. And the problem is that anybody can make a movie. <laughs> and, um, see, you know, this, this is what I was really asking. And yeah, I had a I feeling got that. Got that. Um, and especially if they're non-union and, and, and whatnot. And sometimes you see absolute gems come out of that, but sometimes it's like, oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, yeah, uh, I don't judge anymore. I haven't in about, I'm gonna say five or six years because I make too many of my own films and I work on too many other sets. So I don't want to hurt anybody because I'm involved with their films. So I said, let me step back this way. There's not any question of whatever. I get so excited when I take a friend's film or if it wins something, but, um, and I always feel bad that I have to email and say, by the way, I had nothing to do with this. You really, really, really did great job. <laughs> um, don't blame me. Yeah. So I don't have to see, you know, 400 films of which, you know, 100, you know, maybe really, don't make you happy when you watch it, but um, yeah. no, no, and then a, the final deciding is very difficult. No, I know, have, I know. Yeah. And you said kind of what I, I kind of that was a long winded trying to get that out of you and I apologize but you know I, I I personally agree with you that just because you can doesn't mean you should um, mm -hmm. and in this day and age I always make the joke on my shows and say that everybody is an expert at everything thank you Google or YouTube and mm -hmm. you know and and it is there is a, a tremendous benefit uh, to be able to go on if you want to learn how to edit or shoot or do whatever mm -hmm. you want. But remembering that, you know, uh, Uncle Harry's blog isn't necessarily the law. Um, yes. It's just a place that you can go. And if you self-teach yourself, you have to be or evaluate yourself. You have to be willing to take criticism from people. Now, mm -hmm. this is where film festivals come in and people like you, professionals, have been doing a long time. You can give people opinions and go, love that you tried this. 
next time keep your clothes on or whatever. Um, <laughs> you know, so yeah, but it, but the point is is that um, it, it it is a wonderful place out there now because virtually anybody can do it. But um, is there any educational stuff that happens with the film festival when you do it online or off or in person? Oh, you're talking about panels, things like that, or yeah, yeah, or uh, yeah, I mean, seminars. We always try to we always try to have panels. Um, we have a, a screenwriting panel. We have well, this year we have a lot of different ones, and I don't have my notes because my other computer didn't start and they're over there. But we have a yeah. screenwriting panel. We've got packaging your project, um, legalities and liabilities. Uh, we have um, a director's audition panel where we wow. have pick about six or seven directors. Um, I think there's something like 20 slots, 30 slots, and you can sign up and for 10, you have 10 minutes to um, 10 minutes or less to impress. So we'll give you sides or you can bring in a monologue. We have a reader. And uh, if the directors like what they see, they'll ask for your resumes. And I've hired people that wow. way. So we try to do. Yeah, we've tried to do different things for the community, for the people on the acting side, for people on the filmmaking side. Um, we have a, a director of uh, photography meet and greet where we're going to have several different uh, DPs with their different camera rigs that people can come in and ask questions and, you know, maybe find somebody for a future project. Um, so, so, yes, we have that kind of education going on. Uh, we do on occasion. Um, we did a lot of these during that pandemic. We had um, filmmakers connection meetings. So uh, we'd pick a director. Uh, we'd have somebody like Jeremiah Kipp or Elias Plagianos, um, people who are known in the independent yeah. film uh, field. And um, we would have them basically have a meeting. People could sign on for free. Uh, the director would give their speech. And then you know people could ask questions right there. So um, we haven't done that right now because we've just been very busy. Uh, but we do it a few times a year usually, you know, and try to bring people together and network. And I think one of my very favorite things is people who have met during the Long Island International Film Expo have ended up working together, whether it's years later. Uh, we had somebody from the Philippines and somebody from East Meadow, New York. We had um, uh, Stephen Sapelos, who won, I believe, many years ago at Life. Um, he got Ken Frank, who won a feature a couple of years ago, produce his project for him. Wow. So people who meet and wonderful things like that happen. And that's always the best to see because I think the best thing about life is really the community, the filmmaking community. I love that you call it life. I was like, <laughs> yeah, how profound. She's talking about life. Oh, wait, that's, <laughs> that's the film festival. That's the film festival. Um, <laughs> no, that, I, I love that. Uh, and you all, do you have t-shirts? Because I need to buy one and support you all. Do you have t-shirts on your website or anything like that? Yes. If, well, if you go to um, longislandfilm.com and then you go to the drop down menu, you'll see where you can get tickets or look at the films or look at the panels, um, you know, and, and just take everything right from there. The panels are all free, but you have to have a ticket because we may need limited seating. We don't know. So we need to be careful about that. Yeah, absolutely. Can you stick around for a couple more minutes? I want to do a quick commercial. Sure. Okay, sure. good. Hang tight. Uh, well, of course, we're talking to uh, Deborah Markowitz, and she is the vice president of Long Island International Film Expo. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can certainly see that uh, URL right there, longislandfilm.com, which I don't know how you got that. It's an awesome one. But for <laughs> five years in doing that, I guess you mm -hmm. would. Um, we're going to come out and do a small break in, in just a second. Let me tell you what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the services I know here uh, around the country that'll help in a second. But first things first, I want to talk about the actors. I've said this before. I'm going to show you something that I made and I want you all actors uh, and maybe even filmmakers or producers, or whoever, to think about this because one of the biggest problems I have with our business, show business, especially as an actor, is I don't allow us a lot of times to do the marketing to them and be able to approach uh, directors or producers or whatever. And so I came up with some clever sort of guerrilla marketing things because I like to work and not just sit there and say I'm an actor. So um, I created a, a banner that looks like an actual furniture ad. And when you go to this furniture ad and you click it and I've sent it out, it looks a little something like this. Let me see if I can find it. I think this is the, um, here it is. Check it out. Hey, thanks for clicking the banner. Now, I know you're dying to know what it is that makes a successful casting office or director or production. And the answer is actors. 
See, you can have a great script, great casting director, a director, producer, but here's the problem. You always need good actors. To be or not to be. But let's face it, there's way too many of us. And we can't market to you, which is odd considering that they call it show business, and that means that there's business in the show. We can't call you. We can't send you an email. We just submit to the breakdowns like the other 4,800 that submitted to you on that casting call with no action-packed pitch letter, sales letter, and all we do is stand in line and remain quiet. Let's be honest. Lines are for Starbucks, not for careers. If I still have your attention, I want you to watch this next 46 second video. Now don't go away because there's a quiz after this. Detective Gennaro, I need to speak with Rex Wilson. Rex is already out there on the speedway for his practice run. You know what I mean. Now let me see your shotgun. In here, cool it down. <laughs> Just like your old man, huh? Is there a problem, soldier? I'm asking you a question, Lieutenant. Running in clown shoes. This is gonna be fun. Time! I hope they need more time. <laughs> that wasn't so painful. And I even saw a couple of you laughing. So if you like what you saw, operators are standing by. Yeah, well, yeah, Robert's an A-lister for sure. Oh, you want to book him? <laughs> That's my agent. And if you didn't like my approach, well, I'm Daniel Craig, and I hope you enjoyed this commercial. All right, so uh, I, again, the idea is that, especially when you're doing social media for yourself as an actor, which you should be doing, uh, don't put your sleeve tattoos and your earrings in your nose, uh, or you eating food. <clears throat> Um, spend uh, your time branding yourself and do things that are a little bit different because this is a different ball game nowadays in regards to getting attention. And I'll tell you that if you go to my Instagram, which by the way has just been changed, it's Will Roberts Official, you'll see a lot of the different skills that I do and different things. But I specifically stick to uh, branding my business, which is my acting. And quite honestly, I've gotten uh, two Netflix films, Amazon film, a big film in China, and a lot of other stuff by myself on my Instagram because you go out there and you market. You don't beg. Do not direct message directors and casting people and say, so you got anything for me to do? Yeah, that's not the way to do it. You engage with people. That's social media. Last thing I'm going to say is, uh, of course, before we come back from the break, I want to show you something really awesome. If you happen to be in the Los Angeles area or outside of it, uh, formoviebrentals.com, and that is a good friend of mine, David. I do a lot of SWAT and a lot of cop stuff because I'm a weapons expert. And the fact is, is that this gentleman right here has police cars, military SWAT, everything, uh, police, uh, what do you call it, medical, and he has all the teams as well, the SWAT teams, and everybody knows what they're doing. So if you need anything anywhere in the United States, we have it. I say we because I help them out, but check it out, 4 com. All right, come back to the show. All right, we're going to bring in our guest back again, and here she is, uh, <laughs> Deborah. So let me ask you uh, really quickly, um, what is your favorite part about this festival. The thing that you go, oh, I wake up every day and I want to do this because I love this. Oh, I don't think anything makes me say that anymore. <laughs> no, it's, wow, it's so you're good. honest. Hey, she's from New York. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, there's, there's a lot of good things. I, I don't think people really can possibly understand the amount of work that's involved, um, but it's when you see somebody win. You know, whether you see them, you know, win something and they have no clue what's going to happen and they've worked so hard. Um, but I think even more important than that is when people meet each other mm -hmm. and then make friends from all around the world and then potentially work together. There's um, we have the, the one summer we called the summer of the Italian connection. Uh, we had one gentleman come in from Italy who spoke very little English. And um, to do his Q&A, we were trying to figure out how we were going to do this because he really didn't speak it. Like, hello, goodbye, where's the bathroom? 
but that's it. <laughs> and um, the owner, uh, one of the owners of the uh, the Belmore movies uh, where we have it, she had gone to Italy several times. Her family was from Italy. She knew a few words, nowhere near where to guide this guy. And uh, with that, we hear somebody just speaking Italian from the bar, a filmmaker from Canada was at the bar and he had lived in Italy. And all of a sudden these two start, and we're all looking like what's happening here. Yeah. And they ended up becoming best of friends and everywhere one went, the other went with him. And um, the, the gentleman from Italy ended up winning best Italian film. And his friend was there to basically translate what was going on. And that was precious to all of us because there's no way we knew that could happen. This filmmaker from Canada was fluent in Italian. Who knew that? You know, awesome. so uh, stuff like that is probably what's the most awesome. That is pretty cool. All right. So last question I want to ask you, obviously, we're going to ask you uh, where we can get tickets and everything in the end of this really quickly to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask you, I always ask my guests if they can give us, um, I call uh, the best four letter word in the English language is free. If you can give any free advice to anybody, I don't care if it is in regards to being a director, whether it has to do with film festival, whether it has to do with life, whether it has to do with good coffee, don't really care. Um, if there's any particular thing that you want to give out any free advice, this is a great time to do it. What is that free advice? I think this will translate to anything, any career, any person, any relationship, and that's um, be honest and lead with integrity. Um, because if in, in this industry, it's a very small industry. Um, and if you screw over somebody, everyone's going to know about it. Yeah. Um, but then you also have people saying stuff about you. But if you lead by what you believe, eventually they'll realize, oh, that wasn't true. And, and, and they'll come back. And I've seen that personally happen time and time yeah. again. But uh, one thing I demand on my sets is, is um, it's that it's responsibility. If you screw up, we make we, we screw up. We're always moving fast. Then okay, tell me, fix it. Let's move on. If you throw somebody under the bus that wasn't even their fault, you're gone, and you'll never work with me again. Yeah. So, yeah. you, I, I mean, one thing that I, I actually find a little flattering is that I've had people look through my movies at my cast list and my crew lists and and cast and say, who else do you have? Because I called all of them and they're not they're not available. <laughs> but they knew that if they worked with me, that I am very careful about who I work with. So. Right. Um, I, I've had that happen more than one time. One person said, I'm working for so-and-so, and they said, they know you. I'm like, I don't know them. Do I know them? I said, ask them how I know them. And I said, no, 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 they don't know you, but they looked at your films, and, and they realized oh, right. that I worked with you, so they wanted to hire me. So oh, but, right. so it's, it's, it's really just have integrity. Be honest. I mean, once you catch somebody who's not telling the truth, can you ever really work with them? Can you ever really trust them? So... I'm going to say in life with, with your friends, you don't have to tell everybody everything. You don't have to post your life on Facebook. But um, when you're working with somebody, if you're in a relationship, just be honest. That's yep. that. Honest and <laughs> upfront. I, it saves people a lot of time. And in this industry, it saves oh, yes. money. Mm -hmm. uh, so last thing I want to ask you is, is give us the Reader's Digest version. We know we can go to your website. Give us the once over if you're giving me the elevator pitch for the Long Island Film Festival Expo. Okay. Well, we are we love films and filmmakers at the Long Island International Film Expo, and we do everything we can to get you advertising and whatnot. Um, go to longislandfilm.com. We can't make it simpler. Drop no. down menu. It will tell you about life, where you can get the, the film lineup, as well as where you can get your tickets from, the panels, the closing night party, um, everything you need to know. Uh, if you're interested in any of my stuff, by the way, I'm just going to throw out Intention yeah. Films Media. So it's Intention. Say it Films again. Media. Say it Intention, again. Yeah. Intention Films and Media dot com. Awesome. Wish I could type that in now. Uh, that's okay. awesome. Uh, we'll find that and put it in our social media as well. And I really think I've seen the website for the film festival. I think you should put, uh, when instead of about the film festival, you should put the meaning of life. Oh, well, well, our tagline for the COVID year is things happen, but life goes on. <laughs> Attend life in person. I love it. Wow, there are bumper stickers everywhere here. <laughs> 
Deborah Markowitz, uh, Vice President, Long Island International Film Expo. I really appreciate it myself. And uh, Sal is in the wings. I'll bring him in to say uh, goodbye on the show. But thank you so much for coming up. And by the way, we might get you closer to your actual film festival to come on, jump on, and and see what's going on and, and uh, mm -hmm. see if we can throw down a little bit more promotion to get you folks some more people and mm -hmm. behinds in the seat or people watching the online stuff. So thanks for everything that you do. Great. Thank you so much. This is great. You bet. I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Okay. Take care. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for seeing the show. I'm going to bring, of course, my partner in crime on. He's in there in the background here. Uh, Sal, uh, I, there you are. Whoa, Sal, how are you? I love Good. Sal that you great look like show. you. Great show. Yeah, I think so, too. I love that you look like the time operator waiting on the side <laughs> to take people's um, pres uh, prescriptions or whatever, uh, subscriptions. Uh, good show, huh? Yes, a lot of energy. And they're a huge film festival. I mean, she's doing a lot of prolific um, – writing and filmmaking so you know these are the the film festivals that we're bringing on to talk these are big festivals you know people the folks that get their movies in there um have a, a catapult I, I i think that nowadays film festivals are so important for the filmmaker you know when you think about it um when you forget about a Hollywood movie poster, okay? You know, you've seen the Star Wars or Bond or whatever, but like when a film festival poster, it has to have it has to have the the you know the the, the awards on it because yeah. that's how people understand that oh we won something. Yeah. Someone liked our movie because you have no word of mouth with a lot of these independent films. They're small films. Maybe what you met a, a filmmaker in L.A. or New York or Kansas or whatever. Right. So it's important for the filmmaker that they connect and that they perform really well at these uh, at these film festivals. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, you said it, and this is the reason why you and I have joined forces in regards to, uh, to do this is because we really believe that, you know, we know we're both we're actors and we know how difficult this industry is from a business standpoint from a uh, creative talent standpoint and we need help and so uh, every day you and I talk about new things and the stuff that we want to bring into the fold it makes us realize that um, this is the, a very uh, exciting dynamic toolbox that people can use instead of waiting and going well i hope i can get enough money to do a film or i can act in a film or i can produce i mean it's all right there at your fingertips the only thing stopping you from doing anything is potentially you and so uh with that being said uh, we're trying to give everybody the tools and the excitement that um this deserves mm -hmm. there it is he just said mm -hmm. <laughs> You said it best. He's like, yeah, well, what am I going to say? Yeah. What All else right. am I going to say exactly? Beetlejuice. <laughs> Beetlejuice. All right. Uh, Sal, uh, we'll see you again soon. Uh, very right. soon, I'm sure, right after this call, you'll give me notes about what I didn't do what I didn't do. He's my producer. He is the man, the myth, the legend, Sal uh, Framandi. Hope I said that right. What's that knock at my door? Oh, my God, those guys are big. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thanks for hanging out on the show. Really appreciate it. Again, you are at filmfestivallive.com, filmfestivallive.com. Check it out on Instagram. Of course, same thing. Let us know that you're enjoying these wonderful interviews with these people. I wish you the best. I wish you well. But most importantly, I wish you success. See you soon. And that means in about a day and a half. Bye-bye.